Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode we're going to retest that hydrogen stage, the Nerva stage, and I've made some changes to it, increasing the amount of hydrogen gas. We've added some thrusters to it that can use the liquid hydrogen directly and will help with docking. I've added a supplementary liquid hydrogen tank here because what we're going to be doing with it is we're going to be trying to use it to bring Mars Transfer Vehicle 1 down to a lower, more accessible orbit. Remember, we left it in a very high orbit. So we're gonna try and rendezvous with it and bring it on down. And because we're trying to get to such a high orbit, we, and of course, reserve enough fuel to do some tugging, we have included the boosters on this launch. So we'll see how it goes. I've tried to flick, fix, I've tried to fix the plume, uh, but I don't know, uh, it was sort of a dodgy way of doing it. it, it so the, anyway, I'll talk about it on the way up. So, well, okay, lack of SAS is gonna be annoying, but not a deal breaker. I have to change that core, on, I forgot about that. Uh, change the way that core works on that stage. But anyway, for now we can still use smart ASS, hopefully, and ignition. So the Kasei rocket first stage plus boosters, but no second. The second stage is now the Nerva. Um, we'll we'll still have the normal second stage for later purposes, but for now this is just so that we do test the Nerva out. Okay, we've got lots of thrust to weight ratio, so we're accelerating quite well. We do have to allow some time to apoapsis for the Nerva to work. It does have a about a 24 minute burn time or something like that. So the issue with trying to fix the plume on the Nerva is when I tried to fix the, fix the plume in originally, it ended up having the stock thrust 60 kilonewtons instead of the Nerva's thrust 334. So I had to hand write in, if you will, the, the real max thrust, which isn't right. So I'm a little bit dubious about the whole thing. Uh, again, the problem is that both Realism Overhaul and uh, KSB Interstellar are trying to modify the Nerva, and that's why we ended up with two plumes. So I deleted the plume from KSB Interstellar because, of course, the real plume one is better, but still, uh, the whole thing is a little bit dodgy. I don't want to I don't want to mess up the way KSB Interstellar handles the Nerva because it allows for future upgrades that we might want to do. You know, something that uh, Realism Overhaul does not, it doesn't handle, like, switching to different fuels or anything like that. So... Yeah, I want to preserve that capability, but I also want the right numbers for the original Nerva. Well, we're pretty close to orbit here. That's good. We really don't need that much time to apoapsis. Okay. Separation. Nerva is correctly sized. Well, let's take a look at its stats to see what's going on here. I'll, uh, well, we'll wait until uh, closer to apoapsis. Let's make sure the burn time is correct. Uh, 34 minutes, but that's because of this supplementary tank that we added here. About which uh, we won't be pushing around the Mars Transfer Vehicle very much. This is pretty heavy, it's 100 tons, but still, it has to actually get to that height first. Oh, let's uh, extend these. Otherwise we're not gonna get rid of the waste heat. And let's knock off the nose cone. Oh, I guess this is the other docking port, but it should, should still work with the NASA docking system on Mars Transit Vehicle 1. It's just that it's a different model, but I think the docking node identification should be still the same. Well, okay, let's give it a go here. Prograde CS. warming up. Specific impulse 825 is fine. That's not a problem.
It looks okay on the thrust. Throttle going up and the thrust getting to 334 as expected, and we have just one plume this time. So, okay, all is well, even though it was a slapdash way I did it. Now, in theory, the KSP interstellar configuration made it seem like I could time warp while firing this engine. No, I can't, apparently. Oh well. It had a module engine's warp, but... I guess not. Okay, that should be good enough for now. So again, only the one the thrusters built into the stage use hydrogen gas. Uh, the others use the hydrogen, liquid hydrogen directly, the ones that I attached to the side here. I have my own configuration. They're still using the hydrogen gas ISP. So basically we're pretending that each of them um, boils off the liquid hydrogen into hydrogen gas and then fires it. But uh, we still want hydrogen gas containment because that's going to allow us to reliquify the hydrogen gas so that we have zero boil off effectively. We have an option for that. Okay, so our target is over here in that orbit, which is awkward in many ways. And we'll go to apoapsis. We need to bring our periapsis up a little bit more. Um, up to 448, it looks like. So just prograde. Make sure the thrusters all work. These don't seem to be doing anything right now. Hope they're okay. So we could start hydrogen production. Probably need to. Okay, let's stop production. We'll still get a little bit of hydrogen gas without actually producing it because of the boil off. Okay, so we're going to do the burn in two days and we're going to meet up with it in 10 days. But during that time, I'm going to focus on Mars Transit Vehicle 2 to make sure that we get our water recycled and everything. So, yeah, I'll be hopping back and forth. So I'll see you when we need to do this burn. Okay, we are ready to turn towards the node. Uh, again, these aren't firing at all, which is interesting. Uh, I guess it's because they're on the center line. I guess they'll help with docking, and that's just how it's going to be. Um going to start the hydro gas production. I think with the addition of that top tank, maybe I should have shifted these thrusters. Those These thrusters were not placed with that tank in mind. Fortunately, our Nerva here does have some gimbling. Interesting that it doesn't seem to read the Delta V. I'm not sure what to make of that. Does Megjeb know the Delta V? Yes, it does. Well, obviously it shows down there as well. Uh, yep, I don't know why the game doesn't seem to recognize it. Well, at least over here in his calculations. I can stop production. That doesn't seem to make any difference. Okay, I saw some semblance of a satisfactory closest approach. Okay, well we'll have to do some correction. 450 kilometers is not good enough. So let me plot that at Apoapsis. Probably the best place to do that. Okay, I made the correction and we are spinning our way to the closest approach. Okay, target, negative relative velocity, RCS on. Oh, I suppose we could just use the RCS for this correction. But then it's not very efficient. 
the RCS has a one quarter the ISP of the nuclear engine, so. Well, might as well turn around and cancel out that velocity still. Really, this needs a reaction wheel. Okay, well, we are in render range. And we'll actually have the transfer vehicle, which barely has any electric charge because wasn't getting electric charge when we weren't focused on it, I suppose. Uh, we want it to turn towards us, especially this docking port. So let's have it do that. Uh, with RCS, why not? Well, one why not is because we don't have much methane and oxygen left. Okay, well, this has turned towards it. Uh, fuel ain't great, but hey, we are here. And it's got SAS, so I can hold that. Okay, I better be careful not to smash into it. These thrusters aren't very powerful or quick to do their thing. Uh, this is not a great approach. I can't slow down in time. <laughs> Glancing blow. Okay. Let's try and recover. We keep boinking a little bit off. Come on, I know you're sort of different model docking ports, but come on. You can do it. They're still both NASA docking systems. There we go. All right. All right, well, we need to make sure that everything is shut off on this side. And then we'll have to wait till our next periapsis to bring its orbit down. So we have 1,464 meters per second. Okay, so this is going to have to wait until 12 days or so. A lot of maneuver there. And then, well, we could do an inclination adjustment maybe, but... Maybe that's not really necessary. There's no particular reason to line up with the moon, except for perhaps later convenience. And otherwise, 1,464 will do a good job to bring our orbit in. Uh, perhaps we should keep it outside the Van Allen belts. Well, I mean, we could just avoid the inner ones. So we want to use 174 or so to make sure it's, well, let's say 200 to make sure it's out of those inner ones. And this burn, well, those combined is less than our stated delta V, though we have to watch out because we use a lot on the RCS turns. We'll have to be careful about that. But okay, roughly, that's the orbit we're going to end up in. Alright. And I'll get that timer on. Alright, let's see if we can do this. Okay, we're nearing the first burn, and it just occurred to me we need to make some habitats out of these SLS diameter tanks, huh? I mean, taking a look at our big habitat here, the B330, of course, uh, that would be a hard shell habitat if we convert that stage into one. But, you know, we have a launcher that can carry it up. And it looks like they need more habitat room because uh, they get antsy. They're stressed out right now, our Kerbals, around Mars. So perhaps that's a thing to do. Also, in the same diameter, we can create a flatter one for the lander can. Uh, well base module, I should say, not really a lander cannon at that size. But it will land, obviously, but a base module. Hmm. 
I think our existing lander, I mean, because I haven't really tested out the whole business of landing things close together yet. That, I mean, I'm having trouble landing things at all on Mars. So maybe having everything sort of self-contained is the best bet. Uh, in which case we need a very large uh, system. Made in nuclear engines will help, but okay, uh, start turning towards the node. I don't want to use too much RCS, but let's give it a little burst. Okay, we have our pink purple puffs. And there we go Mars Transit Vehicle 1 plus our Nerva stage making its first correction. Uh, seems like we still have the ignition limit of 60, which the realism overhaul gives the nervous stages, so that is as it is at this point. Okay, 29,500 kilometers should bring us out of the radiation belts, at least it seemed that way. Again, the real radiation belts are their own complication, I'm just worried about the ones here. So, we've got the magnetopause part though, it'll still pass through that as it is right now. Okay, here we are, getting ready for the main burn to drop our apoapsis, but I notice Orion there, the constellation, and Betelgeuse looking rather brighter than it is these days, I guess, from what I've heard. Just thought I'd point that out. So, actually, uh, catching up to something in the high orbit that Mars Transit Vehicle 1 was already in takes less delta V, but it does take a whole lot more time. So getting into this lower orbit, it probably takes equal to or more delta V to catch up to it, but it'll take less time, so it's a little bit more convenient in that respect. Of course, if we had kept uh, the periapsis for Mars Transit Vehicle 1 low to the Earth, that would be easier, but I just wanted to make sure it was out of the Van Allen belts. I think I might prioritize refueling this first rather than testing the next thing I wanted to test. And to refuel it, we'll bring up uh, another one of these, but with methane and oxygen being carried. And we'll see how that works. Maybe I'll put in the second stage of the Kasei rocket and use it all together. See what kind of boost that gives us. Well, it doesn't seem like we had as much Delta V as was initially advertised. That's probably because of the RCS usage, I don't know. Okay, I'll retain the rest so that it can still maneuver, otherwise we're gonna have no ability to maneuver this around to turn it. We have this docking port up here free for a visiting refueler vessel. So let me see what I can do with the Kasei rocket to bring some more fuel up to this. Uh, we want as much as possible. Really, we want an entire extra tank of methane and oxygen here. Plus whatever the tugs use. We could probably decommission these tugs here, but or we could use them for something else. We could refuel them here and then use them for something else. We'll see. And then there's also fuel in this, or potential fuel in this lander. Alright, so let me cook up a mission for this. Okay, so this is the full Kasei rocket plus the nuclear stage. And we are going to see if that works well. And I'll let KOS try and control it. Because we have the upper stage now. And uh, we don't have to do any special thing to worry about the nuclear stage. It should deliver the entire nuclear stage into orbit. It's also carrying methane and oxygen for our uh, transfer vehicle. So run Kasei, uh, Kasei, and let's see what happens. Two thousand four hundred tons, still under the mass of a Saturn V rocket. Really super tall and thin now, though. I'm worried about wobbles, so I guess I'll auto strut. I haven't auto strutted yet. So, heaviest part. 
Let's have this to root part. Well, the lag is real. That's not too bad, I suppose, given the size of it and how much work is being done on aerodynamics, I suppose. You can see the little aerodynamic streaks going on. Maybe I should turn those off, it might go a little bit faster. Well, everything's looking good. No, no, I mean, the rocket didn't snap apart uh, at max Q or anything, so... Good times. Okay, booster set. And of course, main engines are still going and throttle up. Okay, first stage SEP, and our huge vacuum version of the ED6V engine. So there's sort of a max capacity test for this. We'll see what we get into low Earth orbit. So, of course, our methane and oxygen is just being carried by a Sajita upper stage. I mean, why not, right? Uh, we have that tank is a good tank and that fuel is locked up there it's the same size tank as what we've got on Mars Transfer Vehicle 1 it's look like, looking like uh, this stage will be able to get this to orbit well we are not at capacity for this particular rocket and the payload is currently 139 tons not including the upper stage here. So a little bit more than that. About Saturn V, maybe a little bit more than Saturn V level. Thanks to the more efficient engines. Okay, and that's orbit. With nearly 500 meters per second left. So, I'll manage rendezvous. We'll try and use this fuel, though it's going to be hard to turn with this. Uh, I can activate all the thrusters up there, maybe. Let's just get all of them ready to go. And maybe that'll... Well, not that one. That's the thrusters at the bottom of the stage, which are currently shrouded. Okay, we've waited in orbit about six hours to make sure that, basically, transfer vehicle one is close enough so that we can just rendezvous with it at the descending node saving some inclination worries so let's turn it's basically like a geostationary transfer orbit transfer at this point it's about 4,000 meters per second altogether all right separation and ignition of the Nerva Guess I'll extend the radiators. Doesn't seem like we need to, but just as a formality. Pretty heavy. One ton, 1.1 tons a piece. We don't need them. Maybe I should omit them. But I feel like. They ought to be necessary, I don't know. Why is this got a specific impulse of a thousand? The other one had uh, 825. Or, I don't know, do the radiators make a difference? Hold on. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it was the radiators. Okay, that's strange, but like I said, it was sort of a weird thing I did to try and fix it. There's still sort of a conflict between realism overhaul and KSB Interstellar in terms of modifying this particular stock engine, right? This is the Nerva engine being modified into Nerva and realism overhaul and KSB Interstellar want to do that in different ways. Maybe I should just delete the um, KSB Interstellar way entirely. And 228 is what we have it at now because of our bad timing. I'll uh, fix it on a mid-course adjustment, I think, somewhere around here-ish. And we'll tweak that. 
but I'll meet up with you when we get over there and we'll try and get this dock to Mars Transfer Vehicle 1. Okay, we've got a pretty big burn to do. I guess we'll end up with about 600 meters per second, which is not a whole lot of hydrogen left to deliver to the other tug. Well, I call it a tug. The other nervous stage. It's pretty big to be calling it a tug. But yeah, I was hoping to bring it some fuel, aside from bringing fuel to the transfer vehicle itself. Well, we'll see how it goes. Well, now this engine is saying 825 seconds of ISP. <laughs> so, I don't know what to believe, but it's 825 now, which sort of explains why we seem to have less than I thought we had before. Wish it would make up its mind. So we'll end up with two nervous stages in orbit, which is probably one more than I, strictly speaking, should have in orbit, but here we are. But they do have the limited ignitions. We'll see if we make full use of them or not. Okay, we are on the final part of this burn. Uh, the target is still 180 kilometers away. But our closest approach distance is pretty darn good, so the timing wasn't too bad. Let's see how it works out. But Delta V, yeah, it's uh, the reading from Megjeb has been a total lie. The reading from Kerbal is non-existent. This is troublesome. This is one thing with KSB Interstellar. I don't think Mechjeb understands KSB Interstellar at all. So it'll always give wrong numbers. Okay, judging from the way the close approach time is going up, I think I can shut down for a little bit. Okay. Yep. Deeper in feed lines again. Activate engine. We haven't even been producing the gas, hydrogen gas. So that hasn't been taking anything out of our Delta V. Oh, well, we need to produce the hydrogen gas now. I don't know how much of the hydrogen gas we need to sell the fuel down. Let's try this much. Nope, that was not enough. What is up with this? It shouldn't require that much. We're totally missing it now. It's horrible. Okay, ignition now? We had such a good approach and look what it did. Yeah, we're not delivering any hydrogen to the other stage. This is somewhat suboptimal. Okay, that'll have to do. We'll have to wait a day for a rendezvous. I put more retro thrusters on this stage since the last one didn't seem to have enough. Here we go, entering a render range again. This is still a pretty large thing to be bringing out to this altitude. Um, if we built a spacecraft around this whole thing, 90 tons would not be a bad deal. It's like a shuttle. Okay, I'm afraid this is not working out very well. I have to say, in so far as we have been testing these nervous stages, I'm not convinced that they're rather good at this point. Uh, needs a bit of work overall. Uh, but also, I, I think I've overloaded this. It turns out that this stage really can't... It is really close, but really can't bring this into dock, I don't think we don't have enough RCS. I should have put some methane oxygen thrusters on here that would have made a difference. Uh, I don't think it's safe to actually approach Mars Transfer Vehicle 1 when we have so little Delta V. I'm gonna shut it off for now and we are going to see if I can come up with some other solution next time I think. I also want to introduce into this series 
the Shinkansen space plane next time and test it out and its job is gonna have to be to come up to this orbit as well it'll have to be refueled in low earth orbit and then it'll come up to this orbit and then get back down into low earth orbit and cycle back and forth as it should um, under normal circumstances there's no benefit to the Shinkansen space plane over the Lynx spacecraft except if we can get back and forth from low earth orbit and uh, reuse it like that well anyway this is a little bit disappointing but we'll have to see how to resolve this next time maybe get a Kerbal out here and slap some thrusters on here that use methane and oxygen I don't know or send up another tug could be a thing but it's probably gonna end up drifting away from Miles Transit Vehicle 1 in the meantime and it's still pretty heavy at 89 tons it has practically none of the fuel left it's just the extreme mass of the nervous stage the empty mass of the tank plus the mass of the Sajita up the stage being carried here so yeah another option is to send a tug to grab this decouple it off of uh, that's a little bit dangerous but decouple it off of this stage send a tug to grab it and bring it into the station but we don't have a huge amount of methane and oxygen on Mars Trans Vehicle 1 to do that to fill the tug up we only have like a tiny bit of oxygen left you can see here 100 uh, we really do not want it using that right now I actually have locked the methane and oxygen right now but 139 units of liquid oxygen is not a whole heck of a lot to send a tug out with so yep we're, we're pretty tight on fuel overall so we'll see how that goes anyway with that thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time